Okay, let's learn about some stem and leaf diagrams. So in theory, these are really easy, but we need to be super careful because there's a lot of areas we can make some silly mistakes. So this is how we do them. Basically, we want to make all of these numbers go into certain columns and rows. So what we're going to start with is uh, the tens here. So obviously we can see these numbers range from, what's the smallest, 29 to 55 perhaps. So we're going to do rows based on 20s, 30s, 40s and 50s. So generally speaking, whatever the first number of each of these numbers is, those will be the first column. Now, these have to be in order. So it, often a question will say an ordered stem and leaf diagram. So we've got to be, this is, this is the area we have to be really careful on, putting them in the correct order. Now, obviously we've only got one number in the 20s here. So we can safely put a nine there, that's no problem. And let's cross that out. Uh, just so we know not to count that. We've already done that one. Now, we're going to deal with the 30s. So what's the smallest number in the 30s? Uh, it looks like it's going to be the 32 up here, so we'll put a 2. Now, comma, to separate from the next one, get rid of that 32. Looks like it's going to be the 33. Now, what you could do is write these numbers in order first before we even get to the stem and leaf, but I'm taking a little bit of a shortcut here. So let's get rid of that 33. Uh, next, it looks like it's going to be a 35, then a 38. You can do them in chunks if you want. Looks like it's two 38s. So we'll do 5, 8, 8. Cross that out. Next, we're going to move on to the 40s. Uh, so it looks like two 41s here. Oh, no, we've got a 40. See, this is where we've got to be really careful. If we miss out any, it's going to be really tough. Obviously, I'm using a, a marker penny, so I can easily rub it out. But if you're writing a pen on an exam, it's going to be really annoying. So the zero first, then we've got two ones, haven't we? One, one, fuck off. And uh, we've got two, five, seven. Two, five, seven. Two, five, seven. And then finally 48. So we've got a lot in the four row there. And then it looks like there's only two more, I think, a 52 and a 55. So we'll do a two and a five. So stem and leaf diagrams give us a really good visual representation of the, of the spread of all the data. So we can see most of the things are in this column, in the 40s column, a little bit below, a little bit above. Um, one of the main things we need to do also is draw a key. So a key is just a little bit at the side where it tells us often in a box. And this, this is worth a mark, so you have to do it. So we do a little key there and it tells us what these numbers represent. So we can write 2 line 9 equals 29 because in some cases it might be 2.9 um, so that key is essential to tell us what these numbers actually are. Something I always like to do to double check when we do a stem and leaf diagram is count how many numbers we had originally and then count how many numbers we got here just to make sure we haven't left any out. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 in here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Great. So we haven't left any out. So we can be fairly confident that this is now correct. So if a question is asking us to find the median value in a stem and leaf diagram, it really is just a case of finding the middle value by going from one end to the other until we and cancelling them out until we get to the middle. But people always tend to make the same mistake on a stem and leaf diagram. So let's be really careful about this one and go through it slowly. So obviously the first number here that we can cut out is the nine or the 29. So let's remember that number actually represents 29 because it's in the 20 column. And the last number here is a 55. But when we're canceling out, we're kind of going in opposite directions. So we have to be really, really careful here. What I like to do is almost do what I call chunking at the beginning. So if we take three out from the beginning, one, two, three, then we can take three out from the end, one, two, three. So remember, it's so important to go back there if we're going backwards. So we've got a few left. So let's take out two from the beginning and two from the end now. Chunk those off and we'll chunk those off. And then we can see we've got three numbers left. We can take off one from the beginning, one from the end. To be left with this number here, which is 41. So that number is not just a one. Obviously, there's a one there, but it's represented 41. So please be really, really careful when you're cancelling out numbers from the front and back. Um, often you might be left with two in the middle, in which case you find the number in between those, which is fine. But just make sure you've got the same number of numbers cancelled out either side. So a great way to double check is just to count how many are above and below this number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we know that number is definitely in the middle. 